Good evening and uh, welcome. Maybe it's afternoon, so good afternoon or good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome back. Uh, I missed last session, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Ask me anything. Uh, these regular slots are really becoming quite popular and uh, I really love to join my fellow technical experts from around the globe to answer all of your questions. Now, uh, unlike Coffee with the Clares, uh, this is a community event. Um, so it's really lovely in the chat that you're all saying hello to us all. Tell us where you're from. Uh, unfortunately, we don't do lots of hellos in these sessions because the time wasted will get a question answered. And we all know that there's always lots of questions to go through. So I'm going to go straight in and invite my fellow technical experts from across the world. We have Mike and Miko from the USA. We have PJ from Poland and we have Hello. Tom from Czech. Hey guys, how are you all? Hi, everyone. Doing Hello. Good. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I know, Mike, what time is it there in the US? Oh, it's about two o'clock. Okay, two o'clock in the afternoon. And of course, yeah. Thomas, you're an hour later. PJ, you're an hour later. So we're eight yes. o'clock you guys yes, so yes. yeah sorry about the late one i uh, hope you're doing well you all look fabulous i'm gonna get straight into answering some of the questions are you all okay with that welcome to get on the show okay so first question up from kp raz says and i am going to put this up because michelle is in the background and she'll tell me off if i don't i know it can you tell olympus or om system as we're now known to allow us to selectively delete files in the mobile app also allow us to transfer raw files to photo. Well, you can, can't you? Um, you do need to go into the settings on the app, um, I suppose, depending on whether you're Android or the other one, the fruit-based one. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, you go into settings and import, uh, import images uh, tab, and there you can click on and off the raw files. But also, guys, you can select independent images to delete can't you if you just touch them right yeah sure yes yeah nice and simple so touch them the little circle fills and then you can delete the delete here's at the bottom of the screen so right. it's actually easy and really fun but yeah do you need to go into the settings the cog on the right hand side and that will give you import um options and there you can turn on the off or on the raw files. What I would say, those raw files are huge. So if you do download them to your phone, be careful of the amount of storage they take up. Uh, and the other thing, some of the fruit-based um, uh, phones aren't quite up to date with some of the big high-res files. So just be mindful with that as well. Okay. So I hope that's answered your question. We're going straight in. To Tin San Wong, OM1, can AI tracking of birds be used on SAF mode as well? If yes, how? I'm going to throw that straight over to Mike. We're going to go around in a yeah. circle. Mike, do you want to take this one? Sure. Uh, yeah, you can use uh, any of the focus modes uh, with the AI tracking. So the tracking is going to focus on the birds pretty much on its own. It's going to find the birds. It's when you, when you focus and meter with your your shutter button or your back button that's going to lock it so single autofocus will work just fine just set it to single autofocus with the bird tracking on and uh, and go from there now we recommend continuous autofocus no tracking um, as the most accurate but absolutely you can use a single if you'd like sure yeah so yeah. um to change that you would press okay on the back of the camera mm -hmm. get up your super control panel uh, sure. find your drive mode uh, and your sorry, your autofocus mode, and in there you've got CAF, SAF, and so on. Um, so again, uh, Ting, if you're not sure where that is, there's loads of menus. But again, guys, if one of you can just pop your camera open um, and just show yeah, the um, control panel. Mike, one of the you things you can do, I'm going to do that. My, I'll do that right now. Yeah, um, one of one of one of the things you can do as panel. well. So yeah. you can go into that control panel, the OK button, and there's your settings right there. And you could just uh, go to single. But another thing you can do is you can set up that little button on the back of your camera, the little switch, the one and two. Yeah. And uh, if you look up in the, the top right corner, you can see CAF plus manual yeah. focus is where I'm set. Yeah. If I switch my uh, to number two, I'm in single autofocus. Yeah. So you can actually make that function switch and change from single to continuous as well. It's just yeah. another way to customize. Many ways. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, it's a good little button that switch because it used to do it used to have a different function on previous models, didn't it? Um, and now it's auto focused that switch, so it's a really good and quick way of switching. Absolutely. The other way, and that have to assign it to a custom function, and so you've got C your C functions left, right? Yep. Yep. Works really well. Good stuff. Okay. Um, okay. We're going to go another question. Tin always wanting lots of, I don't know if actually it may be he or she, so apologies for that. Um, I hope one of the experts can confirm if OM1 bird tracking operates in SAF mode as well. Thomas, same do you want question. to <laughs> Exactly the same question. Right? From the same but guy. The thing is, we, we can actually <laughs> show it just to yes. prove it, you know. So what right. I do is I will turn my camera on. So I've got yeah. a couple of, let's say, bird pictures ready here. There you go. Uh, I haven't shot them, you know, just to, just to make sure these are pictures from uh, some of our ambassadors. So what you would do is, first of all, you need to go to the menu to actually turn on the subject detection, which you're asking about. So this is the bird yeah. detection, first of all. Secondly, you are talking about SAF. So you just want to make sure right. that you do have the single autofocusing mode, which you do now. And now, now what you do is, basically, you can see that uh, one of the actually birds is highlighted in white. The reason why this one is highlighted is because it's being touched by my AF point. Because my AF point right now, as you can see, is this green dot. I can obviously make it slightly bigger. But in this case, if there is many birds, you want to choose the right one to actually focus at. So as soon as I move the focusing point, for example, to the right now, you can see that it's the right right bird on the right side, which is being highlighted in the white, which means that the camera will actually focus on this one. And if I want to focus on the one, on the two birds down there, so I just move my focusing point down there again, as you can see, as soon as it touches the focusing point, which I'm moving around, it immediately highlights it, and this is the bird that, which will be focused. And it is still in SAF together with basically the uh, subject detection mode for birds. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and That's it's one of those things with... Um... With the uh, the movement and the size of the AF point, of course, if you have uh, all all points, it's it's a little bit harder to pick one quite as as easily, right? So it's better right. to have a small or medium sized one that you can quickly move across the frame if you if you want to, right? Yeah, Absolutely. actually, if there are more birds or more animals in the picture, it's totally not recommended to use the all points because then the camera will actually pick up by itself. You know, right. you have like right. no option to tell the camera, okay, choose the one on the left, choose the one on the right, right. beside the one I just chose. So moving the AF point around. Cool. Well done. Lovely I, demonstration as well. Go if on, I can Jack. add something, uh, yeah. I prefer uh, this area. This is my uh, custom area. This is uh, bigger than large, uh, but smaller than all points because I can go here and this is only half of uh, frame I have uh, subject detection and now I have only quarter of uh, whole frame uh, nice. subject, det subject detection but in a situation where bird goes in all our, all our goes around all frames uh, I always have tracking and track uh, of this bird if I choose uh, this area nice and isn't it great how all of us are using the same technology, but we all like slightly use our way. And the fact that we can share always on these platforms, I think is is just so good because I'm sure everybody does the same. They have their way of doing it. And if they get to see two or three ways of doing it, they can go and try each one and, and see which one works best for them. So, Tin, I hope that, hurt, that um, helps your uh, question answered. Um, now, James says, can we have bird tracking in the EM5? Well, I'm thinking you either mean EM5 Mark III or OM5, but um, it's a difficult question. What I would say, there's always future developments. We can't say yes or no. It certainly can't be uh, backtracked uh, to the EM series. Um, unfortunately, it is a hardware thing as well as a firmware thing, and it needs big processes, big batteries. Um, so I would doubt we could take it backwards, but who knows what's going to come out in the future? You never know if the future models uh, have this one. So sorry, I can't be too, too uh, explicit on it, but I think that's pretty good. Yeah, okay. just, just to add one, one thing, Claire, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but it's just no, about... It's also about the processing power, which you mentioned, basically. Yeah. 
And as we know, EM1X did have the subject detection because it had two processors, right? right. And OM1 obviously has the most powerful, which we have ever had. So it is possible yeah. if you're on OM1 as well, but not the other ones, unfortunately, because the processing power is simply not that big, but not big enough. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's one of those things where you just don't know, like you say, in three, four years, the technology comes down to the OM5 series or the 5 series, but you know, yeah. we never know what's going to happen in the future, right? Because processes do get you know, less expensive and they do go down to the the, right. the smaller cameras. So who knows? Who knows? But at this time, right. it's a no. <laughs> um, okay, Susan Sheets, I'm going to put her question up. So with CAF and tracking, is it good to use subject detection? Now, this is going to be interesting because I bet any money you all have a different answer. So I want all of you to answer this. Mike, you go first, and then we'll go to PJ, and then we'll go to Thomas. What's your What's your? Yeah, so I, I would say it depends on the camera. Um, the EM1X, uh, it was preferred to use autofocus, uh, continuous autofocus plus tracking and use all 121 points. Right. And that was pretty much how you were how we suggested you use the uh, AI detection focus. Now on the OM1, it's a little bit different. The camera's a little smarter. It's a little bit more advanced, different focusing system. And we recommend continuous autofocus with no tracking and allow the, uh, the AI focus to do the tracking for you. And that's why it's really doing the tracking for you. And you're just going to fight with it with tracking. Yeah. And that's the uh, reasoning for that. And that's how I would 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 uh, would go along. What about you, sure. Thomas? Do you agree with that? I mean, yeah, I totally agree. Plus, I would add at one comment, and that is that CIF tracking in the cameras where there is the artificial intelligence for special subjects, I would only use for the other subjects which are not listed, because basically this is the way how you can somehow keep tracking of them. You know, even of even even if they move. But for no. the cars, trains, planes, I mean, you know, birds, uh, mammals, I mean, all this we have in the camera. So no need to use CAF tracking for those because we have got something which is even better. And that is AI. Yeah. yeah. Right. What about you, PJ? What's your thoughts? I agree in total with Mike. Uh, plus, I uh, would uh, add to uh, the discussion, uh, continuous out of focus uh, have settings to change uh, with... Uh, Sorry, mm, continuous autofocus sensitivity. Uh, you can change uh, this and right. go uh, better on uh, slower autofocus with continuous. I think continuous autofocus is better uh, with subject detection than uh, autofo continuous autofocus with tracking because you have additional settings for that. Yeah. Uh, just to add to that, Claire. <clears throat> kind yeah. of a, a little different, but goes along with it, I guess. Uh, but I just did a show in Ohio um, with a lot of warblers and, you know, they're small and they go into the branches and, and sometimes the detection focus, it, it just can't go through branches. I mean, you can't go through a tree, right? right. Um, so what I'll do in that case, because I know a lot of people wonder that is I'll add also manual focus. So if you turn that on in your menu, autofocus plus manual focus, you use focus peaking. Um, so in that case, you could be tracking the bird and just touching, you know, the manual focus on your lens and keeping that bird in focus as it goes in and out of the branches. And that's probably the easiest way to try to do that. It's very challenging. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But you're almost finding it, aren't you? Like you say, when mm -hmm. you've got that much coverage between you and your subject, you you know, no matter what, yeah. it's going to be difficult to, to, especially if the bird's moving around. So yeah, really yeah. good. I like yeah, that you have lot. to you have to take control no matter what sometimes, and that's and that's I think something with uh, birds are hard, animals are hard, wildlife's hard, and so <laughs> there's times you have to take control of that camera even if the camera has the ability to do it, right? Right, right. So cool, I love that. Now this is yeah. a great question because I love the EE dot site. It is such a cool little piece of equipment it's it, it's about a hundred dollars or a hundred euros or whatever and it allows you basically to see peripheral vision if you have a long lens on it it gives you a wider a wider view but um mike um yeah. says please talk about how best to use the e1 dot site with the om1 and the 154 in 400 i find it difficult to use that combo held out at arm's length yeah that would be quite difficult basically i use mine as a viewfinder instead of using the viewfinder i mean how do you use it who, who anybody got experience with this 
Well, I, I could start and then maybe Thomas can uh, do some more uh, detail, but I, I personally haven't used it yet. It's something I've been wanting to use uh, because I've been trying to shoot more, um, you know, like Osprey and things of that nature, Raptors. But the idea with the dot sight, and if nobody knows what that is, this is the EE1 dot sight. And it's just a laser sight that you can put on any cold shoe or hot shoe, I should say, on any camera because it's cold. Uh, so it doesn't use anything from the camera. So it's its own unit. And it allows you to have a laser sight. And the key to this sight is that you line it up. There's up and down and left to right arrows on here. And you want to line it up at the preferably the longest focal length right right um and you want to line it up so that the when you shoot or, or capture an image that image that you're focusing on is in the center of your lcd so you line up that that laser sight right and the idea is that if you have an eagle perching or something along those lines and they take off when you're in that viewfinder you have such a small area that you're viewing that sometimes you'll lose that bird wow. and so by using the dot sight you're not focusing on the camera anymore you're just using that laser sight to follow the bird with the hopes that that bird is now in the center of your LCD. And as you shoot it, you're capturing in the center. So it um, makes it easier. Yeah. I mean, I know some people uh, that have some amazing success with it. Uh, Martin Abbas, who's one of our customers, go find on Instagram. His incredible pictures of garden birds have been featured in loads of magazines, and he uses the dot site incredibly yeah. well. What about you, Thomas? Have you ever used the dot site? Well, I personally used it only once at a workshop, and this was a workshop of my ambassador. Let me just share one thing, and that is what he taught me. You know, the, the guy which you can see, I, I mean, let me just make it slightly bigger. The guy you can see in this big picture, this is our ambassador, local ambassador with brilliant images. And he's a wildlifer for like 45, 50 years, you know. So he's an older guy shooting animals for a long time. And his experience was actually with what we call... In English, it would probably be called a rifle butt, you know. It's just right. the back part of, of the rifle, which it has one great advantage once you are using this kind of EE1 dot sight, and that is you are actually leaning the whole camera together with the dot sight on it against your shoulder, like right. if you would be holding a rifle. Because right. imagine you are holding a rifle, trying to aim, but you don't lean it against your shoulder. Then it's almost sure. impossible to actually make the shot precisely. So basically, you, by attaching the camera to something that's attached to your body, you are actually like moving precisely with your shoulder, with your body, not just like in your shaking hands. So if you can, let's say, get, grab these kind of things somewhere, maybe on eBay or because I didn't really find someone producing this because most of the time these are homemade things, you know. Right. So once you either create them or you or you find them somewhere else, go grab them. And I think definitely this will help you uh, with the EE1 dot sites. Whether it's 150, 400, 300 millimeter, any telelens, this is a great tool. Cool. Um, and as I said, I think it's one of those things when you've got bird AI with the 150, 400, you seem to have like the perfect kit. But of course, when you're fully zoomed out, sometimes looking for things in branches and that is difficult. So, yeah, I just use the, the dot site as a viewfinder. Um, you know, it is, you know, like you say, Mike says it has to be collimated. It has to be set absolutely spot on with the middle of the AF point in your camera. Um, PJ, what about you? Have you had, had any time with the E dot site? Uh, I don't have opportunity to test e, uh, one on the field. Uh, I use only E1 handmade <laughs> because I <laughs> put my tripod stand here and this is my uh, collimator to uh, target the beard. <laughs> and this is how I use it. I love it. I love it. Okay, um, Mike, I hope that answers your questions. Um, we will uh, go on to the next question, which is from Hotgates. Greetings from Crete, Greece. Hello, Greece. I hope the weather's nice. Hey, for birds, uh, for birds that are on the ground or a tree or tree or an egret in water, what settings are best? I'm sure they would be different than birds in flight. Well, I suppose, again, yes. I mean, wading birds are slower. You would still use the subject detection, right? Um but um, I suppose it depends on what you want to get. If you just want them feeding and so on, um, you know, your settings don't massively change, but the amount of shots you're probably taking. So maybe you're not going to shoot with pro capture. Maybe you're going to shoot less shots per, per second. Uh, PJ, what do you say? 
Uh, I would uh, add uh, autofocus limiter because if you shoot uh, birds from low position to not focus on grass, on branch, uh, on the first plan, I will uh, add lim autofocus limiter only for the small area where birds nice. uh, will, uh, are coming. Nice. Yeah, I love the focus limiter. It is such a good little tool and, and people don't realize it's in there. Thomas, what about you? What do you think? I mean, in general, if you are taking bird pictures, there are, you mentioned it, but there are like three types, general ones. Flying birds, birds on branch, you know, sitting, jumping around, and then basically something like I would call feeding or some fast action, like kingfisher, for example, right. you know, catch, catching, the, catching the fish, you know. So this is something that, you know, is going to happen. You just don't know which friction of a second is going to happen. So that's when you would be using the pro capture you mentioned. And then obviously for birds in flight, you need a combination of uh, fast sequential shooting, obviously bird detection in, in all three cases, uh, you know, continuous focusing, all this, while for birds just sitting on the branch, obviously subject detection again, but you, you can simply use SAF as uh, we have uh, discussed in the very beginning, you know, so yeah. like three different settings. So if you are a birder, then you've got customized settings, C1 to C4, you can customize the first three to, I mean, these kind of three, let's say, bird type of photography, and you are there. I would, uh, one, would add one thing. Uh, I will create a smaller IF point with one, one line to focus only on head of uh, birds if uh, we are feed in feeding situation. Uh, nice. You can put only one line, and you have always focus on head and eye of the bird. Yeah, that's a really good tip because basically within uh, the cameras, you can change the custom area of your autofocus points and you can make, as PJ says, you can make them long and thin rather than the square type versions. And if you're just above grass or feeding, uh, or not you, the birds, uh, this is would give uh, an absolutely perfect way of just seeing the heads in one area. And um, PJ is going to show you now, PJ, it's in yes. English. And you realize he's changed his in menu from Polish to English. So, <laughs> <You're> so, <laughs> so we, can we can create a point like this. Uh, yeah. One moment. Yeah. That's a great idea. And you have only focus now on uh, one area. Uh, I will change also steps because we don't need all points and we have faster moving. And I think this will be okay. okay. And now you can, I can change this one and okay. put here. And now I will focus only on head of the birds uh, sitting on the branch or uh, sitting on close to the foot. Love that. That's a really good show. Well done. Really, really cool. Uh, Mike, uh, yeah, I think we've answered that one, right? Yeah, can I add one thing? I keep doing yeah, that. Always, always, <laughs> always. One, one thing that's kind of cool about the, if you're using the OM-1 especially, um, with the birds that are like, say, perching and not not moving as much. I mean, birds are always moving and there's always wind or whatever, but it's kind of a cool time to play with some other features like live ND or even high resolution. Uh, sometimes they're by water and you get that movement in the water, uh, things of that nature that come out kind of cool. So once you get a couple of shots that you like, if you're spending time with a bird, uh, start to play with some of those features. And sometimes you get some really uh, cool, happy accidents. Oh, yeah. I love the, um, the slow shutter speeds with wading birds when they're just yeah. off or they're wandering. That is you can get some really nice um, yeah. That, so, Neat stuff. yeah if we uh, if we have series of uh, blackbird on the sky uh, uh, and we can composite this on on workspace uh, on different way like live composite with darkest uh, area and you oh, can yeah. put on one picture a uh, line of the uh, blackbirds uh, in different position uh, if you have series of these pictures this is mm, opposite cool. uh, opposite uh, opposite way like uh, live composition yeah yeah i love it i love that guys i hope you're getting some really good tips out there writing it all down and getting inspired by our by our technical experts and how how they all work differently and and uh can give you some hints and tips so it's amazing okay this is going to be a quick one um because 
a nice and easy question, but let's go for it. Alan Anthony Quinn says, what are the best settings for taking photos of birds in flight, please? So why don't we get, uh, Mike, do you want to show the back of your camera? Yeah. Um, Won't be well, worth, I mean, we're all going to shoot slightly right. differently. Let's just make it. Everybody's going to be a little different. One thing you got to remember with birds in flight, uh, if I go into my, my custom one mode, um, I basically start out at about 2,500th of a second. Uh, one of the things you got to remember with birds is again, birds in flight. If you want wingtip to wingtip in focus, then you want to be at minimum of about, about 2,500 of a second, but that doesn't mean you can't shoot at 1200th or 1600th of a second. Uh, but you're probably going to have some motion. It just depends on what you want. Um, so I start out at 2,500 just to kind of, sorry, it keeps going out. Uh, but just to kind of give me a starting point, I have it in shutter priority now as an example. I've been doing manual and shutter priority. I, I mix it up sometimes. Um, like here I have it in auto ISO. I could change that as well. But it's just a starting point. Um, you can see that right here I'm in uh, spot metering, which, again, I can change that in the custom function. Uh, and I mix that up depending on the lighting conditions. If it's, I know somebody had asked about metering as well in the, in the chat. Um, you know, if, if you're close to a bird, if you want a spot meter on the, on the feathers or things like that, depending on the lighting, um, it just depends or center weighted, um, continuous autofocus plus manual. I use the bird autofocus as well. And then here I'm in SH2 to start out at 25 frames a second uh, because I'm looking at, okay, I'm going to capture something flying. I want to capture a bunch of frames um, so that I can choose, you know, all those frames to see which ones I want. So that's sort of where I start out. I would say definitely keep that shutter speed up, uh, open that lens rate up and, and let it, let it fly. Amazing. Thomas, what about you? What's your um, take on, on, cause obviously we all have different settings um so what do you how do you go about it i mean it's i mean basically my um, said it all you know because uh birds in flight obviously they're like again there are two types of uh, flights one is uh, let's say type of pelican flight which is very smooth from one side to the other you know so for that for example you can use even the uh, this kind of outer focusing point which pj has just created so the very long one from one side to another you know and just move it up and down and just follow or actually the camera follows automatically within this frame the pelican flying from one side to another so this is one type but then the other type would be like an eagle for example flying towards you or you know so this, this is totally different type and then you definitely need to have uh, the tracking obviously but then fast sequence with continuous refocusing, obviously, yeah, because the distance is changing every single split of a second. So you need the camera to react very, very quickly. So, yeah, I mean, this will be my setting, but otherwise it's exactly the same as Mike has mentioned. Yeah. And PJ, the same for you? A uh, little different because I have uh, different uh, spot metering. I don't use spot metering. I use only uh, central Weighted, uh, but I put uh, plus. I added exposition plus zero seven, and because we have a bright sky behind the bird, uh, I preferred use SH two also, but in uh, slowest version. This is twenty five uh, frame per second because I won't, uh, I won't have longer uh, sequential, and this is the reason why I have twenty five uh, second, and I use. Autofocus limiter on set for setup. This is from 30 to 400 meter uh, to don't autofocus on the sky and don't autofocus on, uh, on don't focus on uh, trees on the first plan. Yeah, that's amazing. Love it, guys. I think that is a good show. I mean, because apart from sort of speed of actual shoots, uh, shots taken per and and metering. Basically, this is a similar working process. You just change the metering. And as I said, it is quite interesting that, like you say, what works for you guys. But it's really good that the TEs are giving you somewhere to start, right? Um, okay. Um, Susan Sheets, we answered that one. When do you use CAF and tracking? Um, Roy Jenkins Packer says, looking forward to SCOMA with the Puffins next week. Fingers crossed the boat goes, Roy, because it's all down to the boat. We've got to keep our fingers that the boat's going to sail. Um, I'm thinking we're going to be there. I'm going to have a, I really am looking forward to it. Uh, so we're going to scroll all the way down to Cindy's question. Cindy says, how do you achieve the best depth of field 
to keep multiple birds in focus, say one behind the other? Um, Thomas, I'm going to straight straight to you with this one. Uh, I mean, this goes to the very basics of uh, photography, right? So uh, <laughs> we, whether it's birds or any other subjects which are in different distances from the camera, you can work like several different ways, obviously, because the depth of field is given by, first of all, aperture. So we would want to close down slightly the aperture, first of all, right. to have more, let's say, subjects which are in different uh, distances in focus. That's first of all, uh, first thing I would do. And then obviously, secondly, you can work with the uh, length of your of your lens, because obviously wide angle lenses have more depth of field, while the tele lenses have shallower depth of field. Right. So depending on, on this uh, as well, you, you get the depth of field. And also the distance from which you are shooting, right? Because uh, the closer you are to the subject, you are you can actually narrow with a tele lens, you can actually very narrow the depth of field of the, uh, of the subject itself. I can actually sh show you one, one example uh, one bad and one correct example of, of a bird, if I can add it to the stream, yeah, which cool. is, uh, sorry, which is this one. I mean, this is like uh, 10 days ago, we had a workshop with an ambassador who is shooting birds, you know. So I was taking these pictures of an owl. It's, it's, I think it's Bubo Bubo or how it's called in Latin. <laughs> well, I love that. <laughs> and, and I was taking many of these pictures, you know. Yeah, Bubo Bubo, I think. It's. <laughs> and, uh, and basically, if you look at this image, you... At the very first sight, you say, okay, a nice like detail of a booba boobo bird. But then you notice that basically the eyes are out of focus. So right. in this case, well, it was actually taken by the 90 millimeter macro lens, you know. So I was okay. trying to test the lens not only for macro, but also for this kind of, let's say, close-ups. And as you can see, the beak and the middle, like between the eyes, so Perfectly the very sharp. tiny feathers, they are perfectly in focus. So they are perfectly yeah. sharp. But eyes yeah. are not. So basically, this picture is uh, is wrong. It's totally wrong. Well, if you look at the other one, where the eye is perfectly in focus, the other one is not obviously because it's farther away. But it's not. It doesn't matter. You know, if you have this type of picture where one of the eye at least, obviously, it needs to be, or usually, it needs to be the one which is closer to the camera. Then, if you focus on this one, then you say, okay, this picture is right. So. Be very careful in this kind of, let's say, detail shot uh, with, the, with the depth of field. If I wanted to take the, this picture, for example, or the, the other one, where the whole uh, booba booba <laughs> bird would be in focus, then I would definitely need to use wider angle, not the 90 millimeter, but wider angle lens. And obviously, I would need to close down the aperture a lot. So... Yeah, it's about this very basics of, uh, of photography. Yeah, also. and, you know, we're always going to go back to that same, that age-old question that the 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 smaller the aperture, uh, you know, yes, you'll get depth of field, but, of course, you lose light, you lose speed. And what is more important, I think you do have to, it's about that exposure triangle and what you're gaining and losing depending on how much aperture you're prepared to, to, to go to, right? So... Yeah, but also I was going to say the thing to do, Cindy, is on the underneath the lens on the front of the camera, uh, you've got a depth of field button. So you can always use quickly press the depth of field button and it tells you before you take the shot uh, how much is going to be in focus and how much isn't going to be in focus. And that allows you to quickly change the aperture accordingly rather than having to um, take a shot, quickly have a look, see if everything's in focus. Just use a dot bottom button, which is your depth of field button, and that sort of gives you a quick preview as to what's in focus and what's not. Uh, PJ, what about you? What do you say? It's, uh, it's one challenging technique for that situation, but you can try. Uh, you can do a whole series of uh, birds uh, with changing uh, change focus from one bird to another, and after that, uh, do multi exposition, multi pool exposition in the post in OM workspace on, on other graphic programs to change, uh, to do something like uh, focus stacking, but uh, focus on, on different birds in the same uh, sequential. Uh, in OM workspace, you can do this very simple and very fast from um, in our program. Perfect. And Mike, you agree with everything there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say that they, they hit everything pretty well. I think it's either compositing using the right lens or it, it is definitely tough because you are compressing, you know, with these lenses, but at the same time, when you're close and stuff, you're just, it's just photography, 
so it's it's just not going to be perfect and everything's at f8 and everything's in focus you know so yeah okay. i agree Good. You must you just very quickly Go show on. the button yeah. because that's a field button because i don't yes. think everybody knows where to find it so if yeah it's a really important it, button that one um it's um yeah it's it's right here, and if you go all the way down, it's this front button and the symbol on the right side, as you can see, which is like the symbol of the aperture, then this is exactly what you should be looking for on your camera. So, and you can do this with your eye up to the viewfinder. If you literally touch those two buttons, the top one is your uh, white balance, the bottom one is your depth of field. Honestly, I use it all the time in those situations. And it's just a press. You don't even have to look at the menu and take your camera away, face from the camera, press the button and it'll do it. It's a really good little um, uh, a mode there that maybe people don't know it's there. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a question from Michael in uh, Germany. Good evening to you, Michael. Hey to all from Germany. My question is, is it possible to add a button to switch pro capture on and off mike smiling i i just all the michaels all the mics the michaels there's always so many of us i can answer it though if you want well, then go for it. <laughs> so there, there's not a way to really do it with a function button but there is at the same time so uh what you can do michael is you can set it up as a custom function so um just set it up uh, the way you would normally start with pro capture so typically kind of like birds in flight right you're probably looking at a subject that's going to move um so but what, once you set up your custom function um, and i think just as an example i have um i believe my custom two is set up for pro capture um if i'm remembering right there it is yeah there you go so um one of the things you can do once you're set up like this is you can actually uh, go into your super control panel and uh, you can set up one of your function buttons now uh, as like, let's say ISO, right? Um, I can make that custom too. So you can theoretically put it on a button. And that way, if I'm in manual here and I press that ISO button, I go to custom too. So I'm yeah. in pro capture. So there is a way to kind of get around it. So basically, you're assigning a custom function to a button, which enables right. click and access, because you're absolutely right. The custom functions are fabulous. Having them on the top dial can be a little, because you've got to remember what you've yep. done, you've got to remember which one's which. So actually having it attached to a button that you yeah. don't use so much or, or is a quick function is right. a really good customization, because... Yeah, it's it's um, quick and easy access, and that's the point, right? Exactly. My birds in flight is AEL. Just hit ADL, and I'm right there. So there you go. easy. Good stuff. I think that's probably we don't need to go around on that because there's no other real work around on that, guys. Is there? That's probably it. PJ, you're the same. Yeah, I reckon that's yes. probably it. Okay. Um, Susan, now we did talk a bit about this, so we've gone through that. So I'm not going to go for it again. Susan, we did cover your question about what are the optimal settings for birds in flight. So hopefully you saw the back of the guy's cameras um, and you can uh, get that sorted for you. So let's have a look but at – go on. If I can uh, add something, uh, you what? should uh, add – Continuous autofocus sensitivity, sensitivity uh, in oh, bird yes. fly plus, uh, to plus two uh, because uh, autofocus will be uh, have better um, reactions. Uh, yeah. Yes, reaction. Yeah. And so um, I think speed. it's important. Should we? Should we just? Someone can pop up the CAF sensitivity in their menu. Yes, Basically, it's plus two, minus two. Um, and the plus two is when you have a clear line of sight of your subject, right? You have a clear line of sight, uh, whether that's left to right or front to back. There's nothing between you and your subject. Plus two enables the camera to lock on. Now, minus two is when there is subject matter between you and the thing you're trying to photograph. That could be moving people if you're on a football field, or it could be reeds of grass or something like that. So that would then come to minus two. OK, and this is a, a you know quite important because. That, that's the, the only difference you need to worry about. Obviously, you've got the plus one and the zero in the middle, but I'm talking about the two extremes. And definitely, definitely play with that CAF sensitivity. It makes such a difference for, for the autofocus to lock onto your subject. And thank you for showing the back of your camera, PJ. 
important settings is also center priority uh, to use. I use always uh, center priority because I know where autofocus will start or focusing uh, where uh, when I uh, put button half or uh, if I use autofocus mm -hmm. on if I don't have uh, subject detection. Okay, cool. I love that. Love that. Isn't that great? I love it. Well, okay. It's actually funny uh, because this question just reminded me how we still do have this language barrier. Because when I first read it, I was like, what is BIF? You know, what is, <laughs> okay. is, is, that, is that a function which I have missed on our camera or what is BIF? You know? And then he said, oh, birds and fly. I was like, okay. All right, I know. <laughs> so You're out of the really loop. Right, You're out of the loop. Mean, <laughs> you've learned you've learned birds in fly. I've 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 learned Oggly Oggly. What's the name of the owl again? Booba Booba. Booba Booba is the brilliant. is the last yeah. name of it. Yeah, I Booba love Booba. It. <laughs> <laughs> or actually I, I, I actually think that the biggest one, it's like three boobos. It's Booba Booba Booba. <laughs> right. let, let me check this for you, but I think it is like that. Oh, I love that. Is that the same in <laughs> Polish, PJ? Um, because I mean, I don't think so. I don't think so. Away from each other. But what's an owl in Polish? PJ? I have a Polish uh, version of uh, Collins birds. <laughs> I can say. <laughs> so yeah, it's an local. owl. I want to know, well, right? English, and me and Mike, obviously, we call owls owls. And uh, yeah. yeah. But, but um, there is a lot of owls. Yeah, wow. but this one is actually one type. It's one of the biggest one. It's uh, I just read it. It's Eurasian, Eurasian like uh, Euro Asian, yeah. Eurasian eagle owl. Eagle, eagle owl. Right. Yeah, it's like the big one, really. And yeah, they're huge. Google, 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 I Latin. photographed those a few months ago. That's cool. Oh, that's I think all the birders, all the birders will know. You know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to go into another question. Uh, Susan, I hope that answered your question. Uh, System Naturai says, any advice on shooting very fast small birds in flight? I've tried various options, but although the bird is in the frame, it's out of focus. Uh, Thomas, you're nodding there. What do you say? Uh, I'm nodding because this one is a tough one. I right. mean, really. I mean, if, if, if you have got a huge sky and in the middle of the sky there is this dot which is like moving around extremely fast and erratically, you know, it's not like flying smoothly. It's just really jumping from one side to another. Then it's difficult, but the only option you could do in this case is what just PJ mentioned. Set the, um, uh, to it to plus two, uh, the sensitivity. Yeah. And then obviously use the, use the um, uh, bird detection and uh, CAF, yeah. Because basically, and obviously try, try to point, let's say the focusing point at the black dot which is moving around which is your bird right and it's really difficult so yeah i mean it's the only option and then uh, once you have the sequence you will have sharp shots but don't count on the fact that you will have 100 out of 100 shots pinpoint sharp but mm. definitely will get some don't worry yeah yeah pj anything to add to that do you think the same mm. it's like but they're so small and difficult to photograph isn't it i mean what you want is big birds where you know like ospreys and eagles they're, and owls they're great to photograph but like you say the smaller yeah. but much more flighty their 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 flight patterns are a little more um all over the place you know um so they are much much harder to photograph start with the bigger birds and go to the smaller yeah. ones it, it actually reminds me one other topic or one other genre and that is taking pictures of uh, dragonflies i think they're called right. this, this, yeah dragonflies yeah uh because once you are shooting dragons dragonflies against the water uh then basically it's the same thing as if you are shooting small birds against the sky right Right. But luckily, luckily, if you are shooting dragonflies, you do turn on the bird detection because it somehow works. Nice. <laughs> so it's bird detection, but it, because it's basically a very similar subject, I mean, the shape wise, right? So it, it works for dragon, dragonflies as well. Yeah. Yeah. Pan, okay. pan as best you can. And I'm sorry, go ahead, Claire. No, no, no go for it. Go for it. I was going to say pan as best you can, follow the bird as best you can. But that's a great uh, chance also to use either all the focus points or close to all the focus points as well. So you, you cover that whole area while you're following that small bird. Um, I know somebody had asked earlier um, why I had all points on and everybody else wasn't using all. And that's where I start with birds in flight is all points. And then I can go from there and change it. So, 
Nice, nice. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, Tom mentioned dragonflies. I have a really good tip for dragonfly photography. The um, thing about dragonflies is when you first start, you tend to be chasing them all around because they're all so flighty. But yeah. the thing you see where one lands and it will fly off, but it will come back because it leaves a little mm -hmm. tiny bit of residue um, on the leaf or whatever it's landed on, and it will come back. So if you're patient and just get your focus ready, uh, you can, uh, the, the dragonflies normally come back to where they've taken off from. So that is a good little tip. Okay. And you just <laughs> said the right word, Claire, because you said the word patient or patience, because this is exactly <laughs> what the bird and animal photography is about. Right. Yeah. You need to spend hours and days and weeks and months getting one single perfect shot. Right. So, yeah, right. you need to be patient. Yeah, I mean, we were talking last week with to Andrew Fisette-Peters, and when he says, you know, to get one of those butterfly shots taking off was something like seven, eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 shots, you know, sometimes 20,000, 30,000 shots to get the right one. You've got to be patient. You've got to stick at it, haven't you? Our ambassador Lukas Bożycki uh, always says uh, wildlife photography is a series of failures uh, right. with only small uh, pleasure with good photos. <laughs> so true. <laughs> time yeah, to no, time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's crack on. Um, Jeffrey Ferguson asks, does using Bird AI lock out any other features like back button focus? PJ, do you want to take this one? I can. Uh, but I doesn't lock any features in camera. This, you can use that like normal autofocus uh, with all uh, custom modes, uh, functions, and all what you have in ca your camera. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, pretty much uh, the Bird AI doesn't lock out any other features. Uh, it's there to complement all the features of the current system not to to take any away so that is brilliant now this is um an interesting question i want to take this one because it's a little bit broad um but obviously you know it's a question that needs answering now uh miss that mr and mrs sandberg says i've never gotten a sharp photo on incoming birds with my om1 and 300 now you say why it could be you're going to say the photo, the clutch on the front right the lens uh, uh no i was going to say either your limiter or if you're using sh1 as opposed to sh2 okay you're focusing once metering once so the would you suggest you. well what i'm suggesting yeah what i'm suggesting is uh this lovely person i'm going to say gel and i'm apologizing because that name's terribly terribly um uh, spoken uh go back and have a look at either mike settings or thomas's settings or pj settings and have a quick look at that and set your camera up and have a look to see if any of those settings or at least replicate them if that's not working then you know we need to have a look at your camera it's as simple as that but um that's what i would do just 100 percent make sure that you've picked up some of the settings things that the guys have shown go back over the yeah. over the recording check it out all right and uh if not get in touch with us and we can work out what your next phase is i just For want to sure. say uh, a quick hello to tito from madrid who's watching in there hey tito how hey, you doing um okay um pete says is this recorded it is going to youtube so you can watch it afterwards um so not too bad there uh, we've got lots and lots of people on. Come, keep your questions coming in. Um, uh, so let me have a look. Oh, Nick, Nick Wilcox Brown is on one of our ambassadors and Annette's here as well. So I'm just scrolling through the comments. Let me just see the other ones that are starred. I think we've done quite well. Here we go. Right. Christopher Webb says, how about digital zoom? Only see two times teleconverter. Anybody use this? Sure. I don't. I um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't personally, but I know people that do. Um, it's basically you're cropping in on the sensor in the camera, and giving yourself a two times crop. Uh, it only works in JPEG. Uh, similar to if you did it in a program later, like Lightroom or OM Workspace. However, there's there's two ways that I know a lot of people that use it. One, if somebody's going on a safari and they only have so many lenses, you might need it at some point. Um, so it's good to have that reach. Uh, and two, I know, uh, of people that shoot, like, for instance, I know a gentleman that shoots, uh, the EM one X for pro basketball only shoots in JPEG. Does it need high resolution that much? 
boom, right. he's got his 40 to 150 just became a, you know, 300 or 600 millimeter. So, uh, so that works in certain instances for sure. And that you're using the cameras processing to process the image. So of course the age old question is, is it better in your software or is it better in the camera software? Right. And I think it's about the same. Um, so yeah. Good stuff. We're going to, we've got a lot more questions and we've only got 10 minutes. So I'm going to steam through them now. Um, John Willett, what is the minimum shutter speed for capturing birds in flight? Well, you've got to at least be 1500, sorry, 1600 minimum uh, and anything above, right? You can also panning. In flight. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And but we all agree yeah. that's about about the sort of minimum you should start at sixteen hundred, and the smaller the bird, the faster the 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 you know. But yeah, uh, so yeah, start with that. But generally, you will probably go higher. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, Nora says, "How do you change the focusing point while birding? Is that with the joystick? Really good. Now you saw PJ do some customization with that joystick, and it is." really important that everybody gets their head around it because if you press it in centrally with your thumb and use the front dial it will change the size of the autofocus points while you're looking through the viewfinder and the whole point of this is you're not taking your face away from the camera you're always 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 looking at what you're trying to take a picture of um, and a lot of doing this by feel and learning the buttons sometimes when I first started with the system I would just sit and just learn where everything was by holding the camera up to my face. And this is a really good example for that. So feel where the joystick is, press it in centrally, and use the front dial to change the autofocus points. And as you saw from PJ earlier, um, he ran through some of those custom settings that you can change. So Nora, we hope that answers your question for you. I, I can it's add something away. because uh, if you have older camera like uh, EM1 second uh, so, yeah. or some EM5 version and do you, don't, you don't have joystick, uh, good yeah. idea to move your uh, IF point is touch point on the, your screen. From EM1 second, you can al always move points on the screen uh, by your tones, uh, moving out of focus point like touchpad. Yeah, that's a good point, yes. Um, There's the I AF targeting was... pads, I think, in the menu, right? AF targeting yep. Yes. pads. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah, good, a good, a good seen all coming up from e... EM1, um, one, two. Te... EM10, oh, EM5, so. EM 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 two, EM10, two. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It, I think we bought it out on the PenF, and then we sort of backdated it to a couple of the new cameras out now, right? So I think it's it's pretty good. Um, okay, Thomas, can you uh, answer Rosemary's question? Can you suggest when I would use Pro Capture versus Sequential on an EM1 Mark III? Huh. It's not about uh, using Pro Capture or Sequential, because once you are using Pro Capture, you are actually using it in the Sequential mode, right? right. So, and, and when we have uh, basically described already, it's in the moments when you expect something to happen, but you're just waiting for it to happen. You know, whether it's a feeding bird, for example, flying to the trunk of the tree or the nest is, you know, and all this happens within a split of second, bird flying in, flying out. This is like right. one second action. And you know, it's going to happen. You know where the trunk is, you know where the nest is, so just point the camera and this is it. And obviously with the pro capture, you can use high speed or low speed. So we can actually set up the speed of the sequential shooting for the pro capture mode, yeah. And obviously yeah. with the pro capture, as uh, obviously I, I guess everybody who uses pro capture knows, you can set the number of pictures which will be stored on the card prior you you fully press the, uh, the shutter button. You know, it can yeah. be 15, it can be 20, it can be 35, it depends. So it can yeah. all be set in the camera in the menu. Good stuff. Um, this is an interesting question. It's not about birds specifically, but it is a camera question. Why does the PBH continue to show up on my screen even though I don't have an external battery grip and have it set to in-body battery priority? I've not seen that before. Anybody seen that? Nope. Nope. No. So make sure your firmware is up to date, Deb, I would say. I mean... If it's not causing the camera any hassle, again, I would say, uh, you know, make sure it is actually turned off in the menu. But um, if it's not affecting the camera, I suppose there's nothing wrong with it. But um, I could think there may be something else is switched on, but it's unusual. Mike, what do you think? 
No, yeah, mine shows up in mine as well. Um, oh, but okay. it could probably be shut off. Um, I haven't looked to see if I could shut it off, to be honest. Because I do, I do plug in my battery pack sometimes. Uh, so, <laughs> so, um, so the PBH is there whilst the grip is off. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it is. Into the the grip settings to turn it off, right? Yeah, I'm sure there's a way to shut it off in the grip settings. Maybe sure. you should uh, clean this uh, Contact. small contacts on the camera. And you see it showing yeah. up there next to the battery. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so it is, and also yeah. to keep the little rubber cover back on the electronics, I think that's also really important, isn't it? But um, yeah, it's there. Um, so yeah, um, it's. It, it is actually there. also interesting. I'm just looking at the button functions, uh, setting mm -hmm. up the buttons, and even though I don't have the grip on, it still allows me to actually set up the buttons on the grip. Right, right. I've yeah, seen that so, too. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. So it's like the grip was on, so you can set it up even though you don't have the grip on. And once you put the grip on, then the buttons will be set up as you did in the menu. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay cool. I hope that answers your question, uh, Deb. Um, Peter. Hello, Peter. Hope you're well from Northern Ireland. Uh, Bird SA1, or is that SAI? Sometimes decides. Ah, uh, Bird S. AI, AI, okay. Sometimes decides that other objects are bird too, and I lose the focus point. So I have to turn off SAI and use MF to pick up the bird. Um, again, I think we could use the point about moving the autofocus across, right? If you're if it's picking up something else, you move your green AF point back across the screen. Is that what you would do, guys, to... Yeah. If uh, if Peter have OM one, of course, uh, and you can use yeah, uh, continuous auto. Yeah. Uh, if you have EM one X, you can't uh, choose the bird. Right. Yeah. What about you, Thomas? What do you think? I mean, I, I would honestly, personally, I would never switch to MF in this case. I would stick with the uh, auto focusing mode, but mm -hmm. uh, I would do what what we have been showing at the beginning. So I would be moving the focusing point yeah. around to basically touch the exact point. And obviously, we have also mentioned today, if you are shooting a bird which is behind the branches, you know, behind the leaves and stuff like that, you, don't, you, you will hardly see it, then you need to narrow the point to the very smallest yeah. one. So you, yep. so you, you yeah. really use the tiny, tiniest point which you can actually set up on the camera. And this point, you just aim to the to the bird, and this is it. This is the only okay. way to do it. Or the other one, and that would be, and now I'm uh, talking against myself, and that would be the manual focus with the focus peaking, which which uh, Michael mentioned at the beginning. But not yeah. normal manual focus, but continuous autofocus with. With. Yeah, yeah, with. Yeah, with. Yeah. 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 To do yeah. not switch. Right, right. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, we've not got too many questions, and we will go uh, to the last three questions, and then we're at the end of the show. So well done. We've managed to um, – Julia, now this is a good question because we do tend to always talk about OM1 uh, because it's got the AI, but obviously we you know, do try and also then include – previous models and if we're talking em em1 mark 3 em1x um but we have a lady that has an em5 mark 2 with the mm. 14 to 150 um so most people say oh this camera isn't designed for birds in flight but we know with the om5 that they are super super fast you know so you can take pictures with they don't have to have those top end models you can still get some really really good um you know some good uh, shots with the EM5 Mark II. So, again, anybody uh, want to take this one? Where would you start? Yeah. Um, I mean, the EM5 II, the one thing you're going to fight with is contrast autofocus uh, with birds in flight. So it might not be as accurate as your phase on your EM5 III or your OM5. Uh, same thing with, like, a 10, an EM10. Um, but doesn't mean, like, like Claire said, that you can't capture birds. Um where you're going to find struggling a little bit is more birds in flight, things like that. You might not get as many keepers. The key to the whole thing is knowing your equipment. So right. you want to know what your camera is capable of and what it's right. not capable of so that you can take control of it, know the bird you're shooting, and sort of know what the bird's going to do and anticipate. And you could still capture those shots. The M5 II is a great camera. So as long as you know that camera and it's sort of an extension of your hand, uh, you can you can still capture birds. Uh, you'll just capture more accurately and more birds when they're moving a lot with a you know camera that has uh, the faster autofocus capabilities and things of that nature. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, as I said, we always do talk about the OM1, the M1X, and the 15400. But you know, a hundred percent, the the lenses and the cameras are designed for you to be taken to places to take birds in flight. And if you have an EM5 Mark II and a what 14 to 150, you are still well equipped to get some incredible shots of birds. So uh, you know, make sure you've got the card you can have in there uh you know make sure you've got a decent card so that it can write to the card nice and quickly um and yeah um have fun um, Claire, I, I think uh, i would even say that there is let's say the old-fashioned way maybe even analog way of shooting with any single camera a bird in flight even the difficult one which is the bird flying towards you and that is you take your camera with any lens basically you set the uh, focus to a certain distance where you know that the bird will fly through this distance once it's flying towards you. So you focus into certain distance and you set up this sequential shooting, the very fastest sequential shooting. And then once the bird is actually getting closer to this distance, you just press the trigger and you shoot, let's say, very fast sequence. And you, you will be 100% sure that at least one of these images will be focused. Yeah, and obviously you need uh, fast shutter speeds as we discussed several times today. Yeah, yeah, freezes. Okay, good stuff. Two more questions to go now. Richard Williams, do you use plus or minus focus sensitivity of birds in light? We answered that question. It's plus. Um, this is a really, really good. Uh, oh, it's disappeared. Hang on, where have you put it? Uh, okay, let's put it up. Uh, Susan, can you discuss? When the experts choose to use Pro Capture, do you find you limit the number of buffered shots? I mean, yeah, I mean, Pro Capture for me is where I am not sure what is going to happen and when it's going to happen. It's as simple as that. If you can sit and you have, your, uh, you know, a great view of what it is you're photographing, like wading birds, or but if you're waiting for a bird to take off, waiting for a bird to come out of a nest, waiting for a bird to go into a nest, waiting for a fight. That is when you would use Pro Capture because all these moments which aren't expected, which are unpredictable, that's when you want to turn back time and use our fabulous time machine, as I call it, Pro Capture. Um, so if everything is quite predictable, um, swans and those things where, you know, everything's quite calm and you sort of know what's going to go on, but it's the unpredictability, which is where focus, uh, pro capture comes in. Right guys. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I keep mine pretty low. I, I usually set mine at maximum 25. It's just a lot of images to go through. Yeah. I'm not 120 frames a second bird photographer. I've got to say, you know, I definitely find less is more. Um, I definitely find that sometimes when you're trying to shoot 120 frames a second, it's all a bit too much. And I think it starts to become a bit overwhelming just for the for the photographer as well, you know. So it's very interesting that. But um, pro capture, like I tend to shoot lower shots per buffering, even on normal non-pro capture. I, I'm not a, you know, a 200 frames a shot second. I like 20, 25. Sometimes I might go to 50, uh, but very rarely. What about you guys? What's your, what do you tend to shoot when you're a uh, pro capture? Low, high, mid? What, what do you do? I uh, use 25 frames per second and always 70 uh, in buffer in all in one because situation like this, I share my screen for a moment. Uh, one moment. This is uh, ho ho this whole action. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> this is uh, zero po zero point eight seconds uh, between this all sorts. It, it looks uh, like the fish is actually chasing the eagle, right? I know. Yes, I <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will and send not this to. Shop, I, <laughs> I will send this to this competition uh, about funny wildlife pictures. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It is the fish chasing the bird. Okay. We wait. We wait for the situations two, three minutes, and this all situation takes only two seconds uh, right. from apex to go away by eagle. Uh, PJ, did you use airplane mode for that one? Uh, this is with the fish. For, no, <laughs> this is for, uh, bird detection and uh, bird detection. <laughs> Only looks for bagel. 
<laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't have fish no. mode yet. When is fish mode coming? <laughs> Under, in, when uh, on one uh, we'll have underwater underwater cases. <laughs> yeah. Oh bless. Okay, now this is a really good question. It's not about. Um, it's from Rob Trek. Camera does the ibis automatically deactivate at fast shutter speeds if so at what speed well i would say the answer is no it stays on right all the time yeah yeah ibis is always on yeah and i think it's yeah i mean it's super super fast so um i don't think it does no i really don't i think it it um it stays on even at sort of 3200 6400 um everybody agree yes no. yeah 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 exactly uh, i wonder what, what... just purity of stabilization or uh ibis or uh shutter speeds uh continuous auto continuous shooting in menu but i have empty battery and i can show it <laughs> <laughs> if uh, thomas or mike uh, can show om1 menu with uh, ibis uh, there is you can choose the priority of uh, IBIS or uh, shutter. Yeah. So speed. Yeah. So you can choose uh, shutter speed or um, image uh, image stabilization, right? But yeah, it doesn't switch off automatically. No. Yes. Definitely not. No. Mm. Good stuff. Okay. I think, guys, we've answered the questions. Um, we've had a really good audience tonight. Um, I want to say thank you so much uh, for your awesome information. Technical experts are the best technical experts, and I love it. And I love the fact that we always get different views of points of view from the same questions. So um, I'd like to say thank you for everybody watching. This will be available um, on YouTube. There's lots of things coming up, so keep your eyes peeled on the uh, OM System events page. Uh, lots of things coming up. We're at the bird fair in um, July, so if you're around for that. Mike's just done a bird fair. I think the guys have both got bird fairs coming up in their native countries. I think you've got one in Poland, and I'm sure there'll be bird fairs and, and bird expos in Czech too. Um, we don't have. Not, not really, not really, <laughs> but there are lots of bird workshops. <laughs> Maybe we need to start one. Maybe we need to start one. But um, thanks, guys, for joining me tonight, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Uh, see you next month, and next month's see topic is travel. So see you then. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for joining, everybody. Thank see you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.